There's never been a more important time for every Floridian, every waterman, to stand together to save these sacred places. Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, Zane Gray, Theodore Roosevelt. These men came to Florida to clear their minds, to soul search, to find themselves. And they left a legacy behind that has forever changed the world. The decisions we make today will determine whether these wild places will be here for my grandchildren. It makes me think, what will our legacy be? We are in Charlotte Harbor, which is Pine Island Sound, San Carlos Bay, uh, Boca Grand Pass, uh, one of the, the top fisheries in the state of Florida. And we're here with, in my opinion, one of the top guides who have, to have ever done it in the state of Florida, uh, in Chris Whitman. We just had a uh, strongest first cold front of the year go through. So it's gonna change things up a bit, but I'm optimistic and I'm stoked because we actually get to go fish. Yeah, we're gonna go fishing. Not... Look at the skies. It's beautiful. beautiful it's gonna skies. be a beautiful day. We'll just, we'll see. We'll go looking around, see what we find. With all the options in Charlotte Harbor, I mean, um, we could have done a number of things, but you know, the first thing that comes to our mind is, is tarpon. So what made you want to become a guide? The chicks. <laughs> I know that's not the truth. <laughs> All right, redo it. Really being able to share what I love about, you know, Florida and the outdoors with other people and probably selfishly trying to <laughs> figure out a way where I could spend more time doing what I loved. Right, I think we all start because we, we love fishing so much we think we're gonna be able to fish a lot. Right. That's not the case. No, but then it, it becomes just as rewarding to share kind of a window into your world with other people. It's just like a natural progression, you mm -hmm. know? You start out, it's, it's gonna start out as your hobby, something you like to do. Right. You know, you get the idea that you want to do it all the time, you realize that you're not actually going to be the guy right. fishing. It's, a to it's totally different than what you imagined it would be, but it's, it's probably even more rewarding. For sure. So, so how long have you been doing it? 20 years. Wow. Yeah, time flies. It's a long time. It's crazy. I don't like those fast, high rolls, man. I know. Yeah. Anyone who's spent any time targeting tarpon knows that when the conditions are this good, the fish are real spooky. And, um, you know, in Charlotte Harbor, there's no reason to spend that much time on any one species because there's so much available. But just as we were about to give up on the tarpon, this huge school of jacks showed up. And man, were they willing to play. Yum. See if you can double up just in case this is a jack. <laughs> ah, good stuff. All right, my under or over you? Under. Under. Just huge jacks mixed in with the poons. Yeah. Oh, yeah, big jack. Oh, that's one way to do it. Jack are so underrated. You know, from a charter captain's perspective, jacks save days sometimes, you know? Anyone who enjoys fishing loves catching jacks, even if they don't admit it. And in this case, there were so many big jacks, and they were so explosive and so angry and so hungry that there was no way we weren't gonna have fun with these jacks. Woo! Big dog. A lot of life out here, dude. Look at that. It's good stuff. That's some back breaking labor right there. Just giant biomass of life. 
Just out of freaking talk went like this. And then the jacks went. <laughs> Look at them right here. Going crazy. Oh yes. Chris, I just yanked the hooks off this popper. Yep. And we're gonna make some magic happen. That's right. How's that sound? Hey, the eat's the best part. Why should we just get one? Heck no. Let's do it. I can't get it out of their mouth. Oh my gosh. Like bringing a knife to a gunfight. Yeah, man. Heck yeah. Yeah. That's another one, dude. What a eat. This segment is brought to you by Yozuri. Fish the best. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. People from all over America lured to a new way of life, a fresh beginning by this sun-drenched, opulent corner of paradise. The great inventor, Thomas Edison, wintered here almost 50 years. Edison said, there is only one Fort Myers, and 90 million people are going to find it out. I think the fact that I'm so grateful um, for what this resource has given me as a, as a person. It's, it's given me an incredible career. And that's really what ultimately was, was the reason that Daniel and I, you know, decided we needed to start Captains for Clean Water. It was simply the fact that we owed it to this resource. You know, our entire lives are shaped by this place and it really got to a point that, you know, if we were going to actually try to, to make a push and get the fishing industry involved and get people like me involved in the effort to save these special places, that we're gonna have to dedicate our lives to it. And, you know, it ultimately came down to the fact that we we're gonna have to walk away from our careers as fishermen to save our careers as fishermen. Thanks, little dude. Get him, Chris. That's a little, little rat red. Nice. Catch a mini slam here. <laughs> the little ones are healthy. Look at that thing. Future is bright, Chris. If we can fix the water. During the rainy season, Charlotte Harbor is inundated with fresh water. Fresh water that it would never historically get. We have created these canal systems and, and dikes to control water around Lake Okeechobee. And whenever Lake Okeechobee gets flooded, the first thing that happens is the dikes are open and the water floods down Caloosahatchee. That manipulation of, of this water system, what it's done is, is it's lost its balance. You know, in the winter time, uh, the Caloosahatchee needs, the upper Caloosahatchee area needs some fresh water to balance it so it doesn't get salty and that salt water kill the freshwater grasses. And then in the summertime uh, and springtime, it needs a little less, another nice snook. I fish in the southern end of the Everglades in Florida Bay, and our problem is completely opposite, but our fisheries are connected. The freshwater that, that Charlotte Harbor gets in the rainy season is the water that Florida Bay should be getting. To compound the issue, that water coming out of Lake Okeechobee is high in nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen, and it creates this petri dish that, that produces a gr blue-green algae. And that blue-green algae would be bad enough, but then once that blue-green algae hits the red tide, it becomes supercharged and it literally kills everything in its path. So we just have to get the state to manage the water um, where it's not such high peaks and valleys of Right now we get, it's either too salty or too fresh. Right. We need to bring that down to where it's a balance. Well, I mean, you can see that it, Mother Nature comes back. Yeah. I mean, this, I mean, if anything, this is a sign of hope that if we can 
soften those peaks and valleys that she not only will she protect what she has left, but she can regrow. It'll, Mother Nature can is very good at recovering if you, if you give it the chance. We came around the corner on this one island that was very productive for us. We caught a lot of little snook and a lot of little redfish. We were high on those catches and feeling good about the hope for the fish tree. And we come around the corner and immediately Chris goes into a crouching position. He sees a fish, he makes a cast, two twitches, and he's hooked up to the biggest snook of the day. There we go. Atta boy. He's not huge, but he's... Snook? Great fish, Chris. Yeah, man. Good job, man. Excellent. Okay. Awesome, man. Yeah, buddy. That's a good welcome to Charlotte Harbor and a good representation of fish that we're trying to protect. Yep. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for your day. This segment is brought to you by Hell's Bay Boatworks, the world's finest shallow water skiffs. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. The wildlife in Charlotte Harbor is amazing. You know, technically, Charlotte Harbor is part of the Everglades system. The Everglades is so full of wildlife. And in Charlotte Harbor this day, we saw dolphins and bald eagles and all kinds of wildlife that just reminds you of what a beautiful place it is. Chris, we just worked this entire shoreline. I would have expected to pick off, have shots of several singles. It's like, I remember being here for years and having singles everywhere we went. I mean, we, we literally just had one of the worst fish kills of my lifetime um, the last couple months. At one point on an outgoing tide, uh, there was a line of fish on the tide seam Snook and reds, big breeder snook and reds, probably 20 feet wide and eight to 10 miles long. Oh, Lord. I mean, it's literally, we lost thousands, if not tens of thousands of fish. Well, it's, it's evident. I mean, we, we, we found pockets of fish and we caught fish, there's no doubt, but what's missing is all the rest of the fish that are usually out here. Yeah. So Chris knew a flat with this change of tide, with the water coming in, that the redfish will be pushing in with the mullet in the turtle grass. You can see the mullet are out here in this right. lane, and then there's like not really a whole lot right through where we're at, and then there's a, another string of mullet up here. There's a little bit of a rise in the flat right here. There's a fish tailing at your one. A little bit left, like 12, 15 now. Got him. Clear whenever you got the shot. Which way he's facing. Nice. Got him. Yes. Nice job, Chris. Nice, dude. Almost like you knew what you were doing. Gosh, it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that trout. Holy cow, he's bigger than that redfish. That's a good sign. Nice, buddy. Thank you, Benny. That made my day right there. Me too, man. He blasted that thing, man. Yeah, that is so fun, buddy. I don't get to do enough of that anymore. Oh, that rise up and eat is just what I live for right there. <laughs> yeah, that was way better than me catching that fish. It's a pretty good fish. Sorry dude. I put the pressure on you. <laughs> I might decide to, decide to make a little run. Tell you what, 10 years ago, we'd be celebrating on a fish like that. Oh, I bet you that thing's <laughs> right on the money. Oh, yeah. Dude, in the middle of the day, high sun in Pine Island Sound, our redfish are as hard as bonefish. These things are so pressured. Mm -hmm. And not just by fishermen, but you see all the ospreys and stuff sure. right here. I mean, these fish are very, very finicky. I think I got lucky on that one. Pine Island Gold right there. Yes, it is, man. He's beautiful. Come here, sweetheart. Come here, daddy. Oh, I gotcha. No, right now in a tournament, we'd be really upset because that fish is over. <laughs> a good shot, dude. Thank you. Yes, Woo. that's fun. It was super special for me 
put Chris on a big Charlotte Harbor redfish, especially in a tailing situation, on the fly rod. From a side fisherman's perspective, it just doesn't get any better than that. All right, let's get her back in the water. Awesome fish, buddy, great cast. That's how you do it, buddy. Man. That, that absolutely made my year right there. Thank you. Great job, dude. Thank you, Great buddy. job. Yes. Well, saw a little bit of what Pine Island Sound Charlotte Harbor had to offer today. Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. The Caloosahatchee River and Charlotte Harbor are under attack. Massive man-made discharges of freshwater from Lake Okeechobee into these estuaries are upsetting the delicate salinity balances of our coastal waterways. During the summer, these same discharges are delivering enormous quantities of toxic cyanobacteria from the lake into our coastal water bodies. Cyanobacteria is more than just an environmental concern, it's a human health threat. Cyanobacteria exposure has been shown to cause liver damage, and there's mounting evidence to suggest that long-term exposure may be responsible for early onset Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and ALS. What's more concerning is the state of Florida isn't telling us whether our waters are safe. During a cyanobacterial bloom, the state tests to ensure that the water is safe for us to contact. However, as soon as the bloom ends, so does the testing. Right now, the state's not testing to determine whether our waters, our sediments, our shellfish, even our game fish are safe for consumption. We need more research and a better understanding of how these cyanobacteria blooms are going to affect us. What's more, when a cyanobacteria bloom runs into the salty waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the bloom breaks down, releasing nutrients into the water. These nutrients fuel the red tide. For us, this is more than just an environmental issue. It's an economic disaster. Florida is built around our clean water. Whether you're a fishing guide or a commercial fisherman whose life depends directly on the water, or a hotel or restaurant owner who depends on healthy tourism, we need to get our water issues right. We need to fix Florida's water issues now before it's too late. For more information, visit captainsforcleanwater.org. This segment is brought to you by Frog Togs. Designed for you, created for the outdoors. The idea of this show is to come to the individual estuaries and fisheries to talk to the biggest voices that we can find in those areas so that we can show why this place, the history of this place, the story of the place, and why we should save it. Keep in mind, these things we're fighting for aren't just for us to go out and fish on a beautiful day like today. It's far more than fishing. It's everything. I mean, the amount of life that these places support. Even though Charlotte Harbor is a huge area, everyone knows each other. The community is super tight. And in many respects, all the businesses rely on each other. But the one common factor is water. You know, in a year like this year, where we have the discharges on top of the worst red tide probably that we've ever seen. It really affects us, you know. Our business was down, nobody wants to come here. It's national news, so it's, it's killed us this year. I've seen a few red tides. Uh, I've never seen one go all the way up the, the west coast of Florida, up to the Panhandle. You know, we literally had people in the hospitality and service industry, waitresses, bartenders, uh, hotel workers who were having to go to food pantry uh, to, to get groceries to feed their family because they couldn't afford to go grocery shopping. They couldn't afford to pay their bills because of the impact that the water quality was having here on our tourist season. Nice. Nice, dude. Trout. Trout. He probably came out of the grass there and got him. Yeah. That's a big trout. You know, this place means a lot to me, and a lot to you, and a lot to all you guys. And just imagine what it means to the millions of people who have been here before. And it seems like everybody's getting on the same page. It's important to bring awareness to this to everybody and see how water quality affects everybody in different ways all around the state. Definitely on board for a solution. We're in it for the long haul. An estuary is the birthplace of about every living organism that is in the water. 
And if we affect the nursery, then we affect the future. That's a decent trout. Big trout laid up in here getting warm. I don't know, man. What do you think? You can try. <laughs> Come on in. The water's fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is why you got to buy a health bay, folks. <laughs> now we're looking good. I was just doing this the other day. Charlotte Harbor is made up of a bunch of different ecosystems. Shallow flats, big passes, deep cuts, mangrove ecosystems that remind me so much of Everglades National Park. And when Chris took me to this last spot, I felt right at home. I felt like I was in the back of Hell's Bay, pushing through a creek into a pond I hadn't fished in decades. <laughs> ah, it's like pulling teeth, man. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Oh, you little punk. The future for our water quality, the future for our state, it, it ultimately lies in our hands. Today, we're in a much better place than we have been probably in my entire life. We've got more public engagement than we've ever had. What does that mean for our future? It means that our policymakers have had to pay attention. Not only is Chris Whitman one of the best to ever do it in the Southwest Coast, but he's a major source of inspiration for me and thousands like me. He and Daniel Andrews founded Captains for Clean Water because they realized if they didn't fight for water and stand up for what they believed in, no one would. Uh, looking back now, three years later, uh, I don't regret that decision one bit. Chris, what the hell did you get us into? Uh, I'm not sure, but it's getting spooky. <laughs> That's awesome.